All right, so I think uh, it's a good time for us to get started. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be here in Bristol Township. Uh, I'd like to say a special thanks to Bishop Howard and the People's Church of Christ for hosting us here in Bristol Township. This is actually uh, our, our panelists here, who I'll introduce in a second. Have, we, we've done this many times, but this is our first opportunity to do this live since the pandemic, frankly. Yeah. And we thought that there, there was something lacking, and Bishop Power invited us to come out to his church, into the community that we serve, and I thought that was really, really important. So the way that I would envision this going today, because we have presented this uh, on a number of occasions, just not in this community, and we'll probably do give you the rundown from each of the panelists, and then if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. We also have some material out at that table out at the front there that we can, you can either collect or we can leave for you. Um, I'd also say, I'd like to say thank you. We have a lot of great food and drinks, so I'd like to say thank you to the 3rd District Fire Company, Chief McGoldrick. They, they supplied really a very bountiful feast for us to, to have here. Uh, so this is, uh, this is the, the senior forum. It used to be virtual, now it's live, and if anybody has any questions not relating to senior citizens, I know we have experts on domestic violence, we have experts, we have people that would love to hire seniors, we have uh, just a lot of great different various people in the audience. Uh, Bree Pospiak from my office is here with my favorite employee, Daisy. I don't know if you've all met Daisy yet, but Daisy is just, just a sweetheart. So I'm going to jump right into it. And our, our first panelists come as a team, and they are Brendan Corbalis and Julia Allen, and they both work for the Senior Law Center. Brendan is the Assistant Director of Victim Services, but they work together. They do have uh, an office right here in Bristol, isn't that right? That's right, uh, in Canal Street. Canal and so what I'd like you to do is just to give us a, a brief introduction to what the Senior Law Center can do for people uh, and, and how they can access your services. Sure. Well, the Senior Law Center has been in operation since 1978. Uh, we're a nonprofit. We're the largest uh, nonprofit legal aid organization devoted solely people 60 and over. So to be eligible for our services, you must be 60 and a resident of Pennsylvania. Uh, we've been serving Philadelphians for decades, and we have very extensive programs there. But about two years ago, and Julie and I were part of this, uh, we expanded our services under the Victims of Crime Act. So as Matt said, I'm the Assistant Director of Victim Services. And we, are opened, we opened offices in Bucks, Chester, Delaware, and Montgomery counties. Um, Senior uh, elder abuse is something that's widely underreported, and there are often um, lots of barriers to access for justice to folks who are 60 and over for many reasons. We only work with victims of crime and domestic violence. There don't have to be criminal charges pending, but there has to be something criminal afoot or some sort of abuse. And what we can do is provide lots of different remedies. We can provide uh, services uh, to remove bad actors from the home. We are, right now, uh, we are in Bucks County Courthouse in Doylestown every Wednesday uh, representing people uh, who have been victims of abuse. Um, we work closely with the assistant district attorneys uh, and direct criminal contempt matters. So that's some of what we can do um, as long as there's evidence of abuse. And when I say evidence, just someone saying they've been abused, that's fine, right? then we're gonna step in and do everything we can from the courts and the justice system to provide them free representation and do everything we can to set them on the path to healing. I think you touched on a number of things there to one back, but one of the most important things that you mentioned is that you're local and your services are free? It's free, completely free. And that is very important. Income is no barrier to working with Senior Law Center. We did open our office here in Bristol in 2018. I was not here at that time, um, but we love working in Bristol. We haven't been here for about a year and a half, um, but we're hoping to return very soon. And uh, we appreciate very much the reception we've had from the Bristol and Bristol Township community, the Township of the Borough. And we're right here and we're free. So one of the areas that I'd like you to expound on, Brennan, is just some of the ways that you see 
seniors are taking advantage of and how you can help them with those problems? Sure. Uh, one thing I'll address off the top is the the pandemic, the COVID pandemic, there's been an unprecedented rise in domestic violence against people of all ages because they're they're sort of locked in with their, their bad actors or their abusers. Um, one of the other scams that's happened outside of the family home or caregivers is stimulus check fraud, all right? And this is often brought about by a family member, right? Um, the other thing that's sort of not talked about is the opioid crisis and how that affects older folks because you're talking about intergenerational relationships, right? We have, we have, may have grandmom, mom, mom in the house, granddad, dad, you know, and often grandparents raising grandchildren. So um, it's a very difficult position to be in for many people. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to bring their dirty laundry, as it were, forward. But um, we can help them in lots of different ways and we can provide them with options and choices to empower them. Um, you have to be careful with all kinds of scams for everybody, but we tell our, our clients, um, don't ever, ever give your information out over the phone. Never give your social security number out to anybody. Also, the IRS and the Social Security Administration will never call you asking for money. If someone does that, hang on, okay? We, we also have seen lots of scams against older folks with uh, hacking into the computer and saying this is Apple or this is Microsoft, your computer has been compromised, you have to pay us you know, $800 immediately. But here's how we want you to pay. We want you to go to Walmart or Kmart or Lowe's and get gift cards. If you hear the word gift card, it's a scam. It is a scam. That's great advice, friend. And the other thing I have to note here, obviously, uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, eviction and ejectment? I know that there's been a moratorium on evictions, but that may be ending soon. Do you provide services to help people with that? We do, and for those of you, uh, most people don't know the difference between eviction and ejectment. Some lawyers don't. So eviction is where you have a landlord-tenant relationship, right? There may be a lease, it may be written, it may be oral, but someone agreed to pay you money. And that's the reason they're living in your home. An ejectment is where you invited somebody into your home. It could have been a family member or a friend. You said, stay here for a while till you get yourself together, right? It's eight years later. You've asked them to leave many, many times and they don't. So that requires an action in ejectment. Eviction, you can often file on your own. You don't really need an attorney. It's basically filling out forms at the Magisterial District Court. But we provide uh, services for that. We also provide services for ejectment and deed fraud. So ejectment is when you're uh, Removing someone from the home who you once invited, but who now will not be. And unfortunately, it's usually a family member and usually an abuser. All right, thank you, Brandon. We'll probably circle back because I know that uh, as I look down the table, we all work clo closely together in partnership. Uh, but I want to go on to our next panelist, and that is Kathy Bennett. Kathy is our Bucks County Area Agency on Aging AAA Director. Uh, Kathy and I have, have also worked closely together on many occasions. Kathy, can you tell us what the Area Agency on Aging does? Sure. Uh, hello, and thank you so much for having us here. We really do appreciate it. Um, this is a lovely center, and if you have food like this every Sunday, is this <laughs> usually how it is? <laughs> I may be there. So the Area Agency on Aging is an organization that is funded to assist uh, people that are 60 and above um, our services are free and we offer a variety of different kinds of services but our main focus is to try and keep people at home and safe in their um, living environment for as long as possible so we provide services in the home to assist them um, I, I said services are free but there are some services such as our caregiver support program where there's like an initial payout and then you have to get reimbursed for things but for most of our services they are free we try to keep seniors active and engaged and we do that through 13 senior centers there in bucks county some of you know bristol township senior center probably pretty well um, i know bonnie worked real well um, and so we work with all 13 senior centers. We don't own them, they're all nonprofits, but we do help with their funding and we partnership on a lot of projects together. We have a lot of health and wellness programs and right this week and last week was our annual senior games. Um, and so I'll make sure that you get information next year when senior games comes along, but we did something different this year in that we had both um, 
in person for the first time. We did two senior games last year, but we did them outside this year. And then we did some virtual games, which was really interesting. So we try to keep seniors active and healthy. We try to help seniors in their homes so that they can age in place. We can provide personal care, um, house tour assistance, uh, those help I phone when I can't get up um, units that you have, we provide those as well. And again, those are all free of cost. And then the last thing that we mainly do is helping seniors who have been vulnerable for abuse. Today is World, uh, thank you, Elder Abuse Awareness Day. I've said it 82 times today already, and I couldn't think of it for now. Thank you. I couldn't earlier. Okay, that's great. We're, this is, we help each other. World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, and so we try to raise awareness about the fact that um, abuse for seniors comes in many different ways. It's not only the scams, financial exploitation, but it's physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual assault, um, it, a lot of different ways that, that an individual might be abused. And so we have in our agency what's called protective services, and protective services will go out and do an investigation to determine if an abuse has occurred and help that senior. And so that's how we get involved with the district attorney's office, with law enforcement, um, and the fact that we have our Crimes Against Older Adults Task Force so that we can coordinate and work together so that we can help individuals who have been victims of abuse, of elder abuse. And actually, uh, you talk about the games. Uh, I, I'm a little off my game. I did just come from the beach from vacation. I know. But I, I poor, forgot, guy. <laughs> I forgot, yeah, poor guy. I forgot to ask uh, Brendan, how do people get a hold of you? You can get a hold of us. The easiest way is our website. It's www.seniorlawcenter. That's one word. Dot org. O -R -G. Or you can just Google Senior Law Center, and all of our information will come up. That's great. Thank you. And uh, Kathy, you were mentioning that we tend to collaborate a lot. You, you also mentioned the Bucks County Crimes Against Older Adults Task Force. Uh, that is something, could you explain that a little bit to the people sure. in the audience? Um, the Crimes Against Older Adults Task Force started 15, 18 years ago when we had this vision of the fact that there's a bunch of us who are concerned about seniors who are victims of crime and abuse. And so we come together in order to collaborate and work together on cases. Um, to make sure that we're not tripping over each other or missing something. Um, so we try to collaborate in a multidisciplinary approach to addressing elder abuse. But the other thing that our task force does is also educate the community about elder abuse. We have a website, it's on the Bucks County website, but it's the crimes, and you have to type this whole thing in folks. Crimes against, start with Bucks County? Bucks County Crimes Against Older Adults Task Force. Um, and you will get to our website, but there's a lot of information, and some of that information is out on the uh, table that's, that's out there. Um, but we do try to raise awareness. We try to do some other things that uh, inform individuals about elder abuse and how to prevent it. Well, that's great. I really appreciate that. And you, were, you had mentioned, I think, a couple of things about uh, related to COVID, and I know not would. Hopefully we're seeing the other side, but I still see some vestiges of, of COVID. And if seniors are feeling uh, nervous about COVID, or frankly, if they're, if they're shut in or they're, they're reluctant to leave their house, do you provide services specific to those types of seniors as well? Yeah, what we have developed is a couple of different things. One is we've developed a telephone reassurance program so that we will call individuals um, during the COVID because seniors were feeling so isolated. And I don't know how it's been for you all, but coming back out and not wearing a mask has been just weird to me. Yeah. Um, and I stop and think about it. I mean, I still have it nearby because it's like my security blanket. Well, if you think about seniors in their home, they're even more frightened to come out. Um, and so we've done a couple of things. One is the telephone reassurance. We've also sent out what we call COVID care packages, and these are free. You just give me a name and, and an address and we'll send it out. It has masks in it. and um, gloves and wipes and you know all sanitary the, the sanitizer all those kinds of things in it again hoping that that will um, help seniors want to get out and, and feel safe outside um, we also during COVID and not so much as now because people are getting out and about but we were also doing assistance with shopping because again people were just a little bit worried about going out and going into grocery stores and at the very height you know when it first started stores weren't providing that service too much and so we were we had a 
cadre of volunteers that called us and said, well, you have seniors, they must need something, what can we do to help? And so that uh, we uh, got that all set up for them as well. So just to try to keep it straight in everybody's mind, we, we've heard from the civil side where civil senior law center will help people. We've heard from the government side uh, on, on the civil side as well, or administrative area agency on aging, free, free for the most part. And next, we're going to hear from the consumer protection side of things. We're going to hear from Michael Bannon, who is the director of Bucks County Consumer Protection and Weights and Measures. Uh, Michael, welcome. Thank you, Matt, and, and thanks to everybody for having us today. My wife tells me I have a really loud outside voice. So what I'm hoping to do here is not use the microphone. Can you guys hear me okay? Good, I'll even bring it down a notch. You guys can hear me, so it's so say But thank you for having us today. It's really great to be here and with my fellow pan panelists that we work with on a regular time. My name is Mike Bannon. I'm the director of the Bucks County Office of Consumer Protection. Uh, and we deal with uh, a lot of different things. One thing we deal with is business complaints. When residents have complaint against a business, uh, when they maybe purchase something like an appliance or a warranty, uh, we certainly help if there's a problem with that warranty or that appliance, we can help. Uh, mediate complaints against businesses, which is a big thing that we do. We also uh, deal a lot when they say mediate with uh, home improvement contractors. If you're a homeowner and ever had to hire a contractor to do it, it can be tricky out there doing that. There's a lot of great contractors out there, but finding the good contractor is the important or, or the tricky thing to do. We in my office have brochures that you can get for free and I have some out on the desk and it's on our website uh, on many different subjects, but one is hiring a home improvement contractor, sorry about the wrong one, is hiring a home improvement contractor to tell you what you should put down as a deposit, uh, what, how you should look at the contract and find a registered contractor. So we, we have a lot of information there, but we also keep track of those complaints. And if we get a lot of complaints about a particular home improvement contract or any business, I don't want to pick on contractors, but uh, home improvement contractors, and we think something criminal may be going on, uh, that's when I approach the district attorney's office and say, this is not just like a bad construction job where they did a bad job uh, or, or poor work or didn't know. This gets to the, to the level of possibly fraud. Uh, and Matt and his team look at it and they've done a great job of, uh, let's say, picking those frauds uh, out of Bucks County. I think we're really lucky for the job and the system that we have uh, with home improvement contractors, although there's still issues out there. So thanks, Matt, to, to you and your team on that. What I'd like to add to that, Mike, <clears throat> and you're going to hear the recurring theme, and that is that we all really work together. I, I know that I get, uh, I, I handed out a couple of cards today, and I get a lot of emails, phone calls, even myself, but my staff we have a staff of 100 at the district attorney's office. We get a lot of complaints about consumer fraud. And the first call that we make is to Mike Bannon, and whether it's somebody that's elderly or not. And Mike will almost always have a book, I like to call it, on whether there have been other complaints about. Yeah, literally, yes. I got a book on complaints. Literally, that's a book. <laughs> uh, on whether there are complaints about certain contractors that like to take advantage of, of our citizens here. And one thing that I will tell you, it, it can be difficult to prosecute these cases because the first thing that everybody says is, well, that's civil. you got to take that to court. But if we get enough complaints and they're of the same kind of nature, we do prosecute those cases because it's up to us to keep everybody safe. And the best way to do that is by using all of our our representation as a force multiplier. But Mike, before um, I talk too much here, can you tell us about some of the, uh, now spring has sprung, we're heading into summer, uh, some of the scams that you've been seeing lately or some things that the people in the audience should be careful of? 
I sure can, and, and we haven't seen it too much this year, but we know that in the spring and the early summer that traveling contractors go door to door. Uh, in particular, they like to go down up 95, Highway 95, uh, and travel from Florida all the way up to Maine, uh, and they scan people. They knock on doors and say they can pave your driveway, they can do their your driveway job really cheap because they have leftover material. Uh, so many times we see and it's happening now, we are starting to get calls, the, the traveling contractor, the scammer that knocks on your door. I, I have to say, if somebody knocks on your door and says that they have a really good deal, be skeptical uh, of that. A lot of times we see these, uh, just for example, these contra, the, the, the driveway, the blacktop driveway pavers that, that they put the black tar on top of the driveway. We know sometimes that they don't use tar, they just use an oil base that washes away in a few days. It looks good when they do the job. Uh, and then you find out in the next rain that it's all washed off. So there's many different scams out there, but that tends to be the one that, that we see this, this time of year. We also are seeing, and I'm sure everybody has seen, uh, a lot of scam phone calls that come to our house all the time, day and night, they're coming, scams or, scammers are calling. I just want to break down for everybody, just real briefly, I won't take up too much time, but you know, the, the uh, scam phone call, the robocaller has really evolved with technology over time. We're all getting more and more calls from a robo dialer, and that's actually a computer program and they take that program and they put in an area code, 215, 610, and then that dialing machine dials numbers so fast it keeps dialing numbers hoping to get to somebody's home phone where they can leave a message or even better yet, they're hoping somebody picks up the phone and they'll tell you that uh, they might have, they can ex do an extended warranty on your vehicle. How many people, hey, you're getting those phone calls, the extended warranty, right? So, so you're getting that baloney when they call. They just want to talk to you and, and steal your personal information. So uh, when you follow, the, the, the answer is don't follow that, don't pick up the phone on these scam calls. There are things you can sign up for for free, like a website called Nomo Robo uh, that does a pretty good job of, of uh, downplaying or bringing down the amount of scam calls that you get. It knows when numbers have been reported uh, into a database, it disconnects that number when it calls your particular phone, which decreases the amount of calls that you get. Uh, that's a good, and for your cell phone, there's a free app called Hiya, H-I-Y-A. It's not an official endorsement, but uh, right now that seems to work best for stopping scam calls on your, your smartphone. That's not to be confused with the song, Hey Ya. <laughs> that's right, not Hey Ya, not to, not to be confused. Outcast. <laughs> that's right, Outcast, there you go. And if I could also, before you move on, Matt, you know what we talk about. I'm not going to move on, go ahead. Matt. <laughs> Uh, we also have great information for, for uh, Buddy Smarts for older adults that has a lot of really good tips uh, for folks. And it says for older adults, but I mean, even people like Kathy can use it, younger adults can use it, and it has lots of good information in here about scams and other problems that you can. So this is a good book. Identity Theft is another book that we have, so we've got lots of good free stuff. Thanks, Matt. Can I just... <laughs> Yeah, get in there, Kathy. Yeah, can I just mention that when he, when he was talking, no, I'm not going to. Oh, <laughs> yeah. When he was talking about phones, I think one of the hardest things is for seniors not to pick up the phone and let, let it go to a voicemail system. And, and so I don't know how to encourage that, but it, it really is an, an un, you have to unlearn a, a way of, of having dealt with phones in your life to, to encourage them to just let it go to a voicemail. If it's somebody that knows you, they're going to leave you a message. They're gonna wanna, you know, then you can listen to it and call them back. Um, so that, I think that's one of the hardest things is that they, and then they get engaged so quickly. They're trained to, to engage with, with somebody. So if there's anything you can do about that, you just put that out there. And these scam artists, I don't have to tell you folks, are really good at what they do. They're professional yeah. scam artists. I have people all the time say, how did they fall for that? These guys are so good at what they do, you really can't fall for it very easily. And this is a, just a, to add on top of that. So think about it like this. It's a, with, with these robo divers now, they're not just throwing one fishing line into the water <laughs> trying to catch one fish. It's thousands of fishing lines out there all at once and they only got to catch one fish to eat for the day. So to, to build on what Kathy was saying, I, I'm gonna add to that. There's two rules here. 
if you take two things from this, well, well, three. Number one, the services are free. But number two, don't answer a phone call if you don't know the number. Let it go to voicemail. And number two, don't, don't click an email if you don't know the email either. Because that's a way that they can worm their way into your computers. Uh, and it's, it's hard because we're curious. And frankly, in the case of some seniors, we're lonely. And this may be the only human contact we have. Oh my gosh, the phone rang and we're running to the mailbox. But a lot of times it's a come on. And we, we don't want to put ourselves in that position. And here's even, so let's say they get past your first line of defense and you do pick up that phone because you didn't check that caller ID. Here's a way to know it's a robo dial. And I do this every once in a while when I get fooled. I pick it up, I click the on button, I say hello. If they don't answer immediately, hello, I hang up. And some people, and we've had these senior forums where the seniors will get feisty, you know who I'm talking about, and they'll, and they'll say, well, I'll blow a whistle in the phone or I'll argue with the person. Don't do that. Once they know there's a live fish on the end of that line, your name and number go on a list. And you, will, you may not have been gotten on this scam call, but you may be get, gotten on a different scam call. Don't take the bait. Mike, you got something to say? I gotta, I gotta talk about that list for a second because that list is really a great point, Matt. Once they get, if you answer and have a conversation, they have your phone number and they put you on a talker's list. And that talker's list is sold on the dark web. So this is somebody that you can have a conversation with. It's cheap for the talker list. But if that talker talks about uh, their social security number or it's shared their birthday, that, that information goes onto that dark web for sale on that talker list and becomes more expensive and you will definitely get more and more phone calls if you're on that list. So you don't want to be on that list. Right. And, and I'm going to aggregate this and then I'm going to move on to Maggie. But Mike, <laughs> Sorry, Maggie. Uh, if, if, somebody has a, if somebody has a complaint about a business or they have an issue with a warranty or, or they want to just check on whether a business is legit, can they contact you and how do they get a hold of you? We, we really want people to call our office with any kind of consumer related question. Nothing too silly. We solve problems. You can call us at 215-348-6060 or our email, which is on all these brochures that are outside in the lobby. I have the phone number and the email there. Thank you. I think it's a close race. I don't know who my dad talks to more, Bishop Howard or Mike Fanning. <laughs> But and all of your services are free, right? They are, yes they are. All the service are mediation and all it's free from our office also. Excellent. So next we're going to hear from Maggie Javitt, who is the elder abuse advocate at Network of Victim Assistance, NOVA. And uh, Maggie, can you tell us what NOVA does generally and then what you do for them? Sure. Um, I do not have an outside voice, so I will be using the microphone. Um, yes, NOVA stands for Network of Victim Assistance. We are a victim service organization based right here in Bucks County. Our main office is in Jamison, um, but we do have an office in Lower County in Fairless Hills. It's right by the Oxford Valley Mall. Um, and then we also have an office up in Perkesee as well for people who live in Upper County. Um, so NOVA uh, has a multitude of different services. I myself, I'm a victim advocate. Uh, myself and the other victim advocates uh, provide uh, a, quite a few different services for victims of crime in Bucks County. One of the main ones that we do is we provide accompaniment with victims to court, um, to police stations, to hospitals, um, whatever setting they need support in, we will go with them. Uh, we go to uh, court often. Uh, we work with the district attorney's off, uh, office on a daily basis um, to coordinate um, with the DAs on the case and um, to get victims to court and where they need to be, make sure that they're up to date and informed and know what's going on with their case. I don't know if anyone has any experience with the criminal justice process, but it's complicated, um, even for somebody who works um, in it day in and day out. It can be very confusing, um, and if you add on top of the confusion of the system with uh, the trauma of being victimized, it can be even more 
difficult to understand. So um, myself and the other advocates, we make sure that our clients are um, understanding of what's going on, answer any questions they may have during, after, in between court hearings. Um, so that way we can try to make the process as, as easy as possible for them. Uh, we also, I mentioned hospitals. Um, NOVA runs the forensic nursing program for Bucks County. So um, if anyone has watched any cop shows, um, you've probably heard of someone going to a hospital for a sexual assault exam. Um, NOVA runs that program in all of the hospitals in Bucks County. All someone needs to do is go to an emergency room and say that they've been sexually assaulted and the emergency room will contact us and a nurse will be at the hospital within an hour. Um, and that nurse has been trained in trauma-informed uh, evidence collection and medical care for that victim. Uh, and they will go over all of the risks um, that come along with that exam. Um, in addition to advocacy and forensic nursing, we also have counseling that is free uh, for anyone who's been a victim of a crime in Bucks County. That is, those are the two caveats. You have to be a victim of a crime um, and you have to live in Bucks County. Um, but those services are free. All of our services are free, like everybody else up here. Um, but our counseling is free. That's something that shocks a lot of people. They often say, you don't need my insurance information or anything like that. We don't, we don't want to know who your insurance provider is. We don't care. We don't need it. Um, the counseling is available for anyone um, from the age of four all the way up to 94. Um, anyone who's um, been victimized in their life, whether it happened yesterday or 20 years ago, those counseling services are available for them. Uh, and then we also have educational programs um, for, again, everybody from preschoolers um, through college students to professionals in the community. We provide programs about safe touches, bullying, online safety, um, sexual assault prevention, uh, how to work with victims in a trauma-informed way. You name it, we probably have an educational program on it. Um, and again, all of those services are free. Um, I myself, I'm the elder abuse advocate, so I work specifically with people who are age 16 and over. Um, but all of those services that I mentioned um, previously are available for anyone at any age. So that's really great, Maggie. And I, I have to vouch, but I'm vouching for everybody here on this panel. <laughs> but I've worked with NOVA, I've been doing this for 28 years, and Network Victim Assistance has never let me down. Frankly, none of these people have ever let me down. And, sure, uh, Mike. <laughs> Mike, but we'll, we'll put that on hold for now, right? Uh, Mike, that's great. Uh, but Maggie, could you, uh, could you speak, uh, well, first of all, let people know how they can get a hold of NOVA. But before I turn it back over to you, another interesting point that you should know is we, we can't prosecute every case. There may be some victim reluctance. There may be statute of limitations issues. There may be a, a whole host of reasons. But that doesn't matter. The network of victim assistance as long as there was a crime that occurred they will still provide you with their services i think that's very important for you to know uh, but how do people get a hold of network of victim assistance no. sure so we have a 24-hour hotline um you probably you don't need to write this down our information's on the table please feel free to grab it um but that number is 1-800-675-6900 you can call that number any hour of the day, any day of the week, Christmas, New Year's, uh, Arbor Day, whatever, <laughs> um, and someone will be able to um, help you with whatever you need. Sometimes people call it because they want to get set up with our services. Um, sometimes people call it because they have a question about our services, and oftentimes police officers, district attorneys will call it because they want to refer someone for services. Um, but that is the best way to get in contact with us. Right now, we are still working remotely. Um, so there is kind of an extra step with calling our hotline. You'll be deferred to an answering service who will then call us to then call you. So it's a one extra step in there, but regardless, you will get someone at any time of day, any day of the week. That's great to know. So this is what, I, this is what I'd like to do. I'm gonna talk for a couple minutes. Usually we have Kate Kohler on our panel who, who works with me and with Brianne, but she's actually in the middle of a jury trial. So I'm gonna mention a couple things and then I'm, I'm, this is your cue, I'm gonna give each of you your last word. Uh, and then what I think we should do, since it's such a small group, 
we'll have some fellowship, as you were speaking about, and we'll just mingle together. If you have any direct questions, you can just come right up to and ask us. But I'd also like you to know that Brianne Pospiak, who is one of our assistant district attorneys, is here with Daisy, uh, our comfort dog. Daisy is a professional, actually. Daisy is working right now. She has on her vest, and that means that she is working, but she is the kindest, sweetest, Brie too, but Daisy is the <laughs> sweetest dog you have ever, ever met. Uh, she, she stays with us in the, in the office uh, as long as we're there, and she just makes our brain to our day. So, and I would just like to jump in about Daisy real quick. So um, Daisy is our the comfort dog at the DA's office, and we often find ourselves sitting with victims in the DA's office for hours at a time, um, just waiting for their turn to testify or waiting to hear a verdict. And as you can imagine, that's an incredibly scary and nerve wracking time. Um, but when Daisy comes in the room, it's like those nerves just evaporate. Um, she can just be sitting at someone's feet and let, let them stroke her ears and the impact that she has on victims is just astounding. Um, and um, myself and the other advocates like to say that she's our comfort dog too, because sometimes we need to snuggle every now and then as well. Um, but we love Daisy. Um, Matt says she's his favorite employee. She's our favorite coworker. Um, everybody loves Daisy, but the victims especially just cannot get enough of her. And the impact she's had on them is just incredible. Yeah, thank you. That's that all truly matters. So. What I want to say is essentially this, that if, if, if you know a senior, or frankly anybody, I don't want to limit it to senior, but if you know a senior that may, that you suspect may have been victimized, or if, if you yourself have been victimized, you should not feel ashamed about that. You've got to contact somebody on this panel, or your local police, or frankly, even if you want to make an anonymous report. And I have these cards, I have a couple of these cards out front here. And if you know of somebody that's been victimized or you want to report something, frankly, it can be anything. Drug dealing, anything. Uh, you can be anonymous. There's a way to get us on here. Bucks County, uh, BucksDA.org is how to, to make an anonymous report. Uh, but the other thing that I'd like to say is we all know so much about this because we're just like you. We, we've been, we, we've been approached. People try to scam us. People try to take advantage of but my, my dad's about to be 80, so I'm constantly worried about him, constantly. That's why I have Bishop Howard and Mike Batty checking up on him all the time. Uh, so this is, this is something real that affects all of us. Uh, and and, and the, the last thing that I would like to say, it is really our pleasure to come to the community and to present like this live. And if yeah. you feel that this is worthwhile, you have another, another parish, another church, another group that you would like us to present to, we can do this via video, we've done that, but we also can come live. Now that's, you're already paying for our services, your tax dollars pay our salaries and pay for these services. So I would offer that to you as well. Uh, so now I'm just gonna go down the line and I think afterwards we'll have a little bit of fellowship and we can get together and you can ask some questions. So Brendan and Julia, any last words? I'm just going to introduce Julia because I didn't before. She is our victim, a legal advocate. She'll be in court with me tomorrow at the victim's sides. She spent hours today with each of those victims preparing them. And I'm going to give her the last word. So I just wanted to say thank you for coming out today. Um, it's a pleasure meeting you guys. And I just wanted to let you guys know what Matt was piggybacking off of that is that a victim shouldn't feel ashamed of coming forward. Someone who I speak to seniors every day for the last over 10 years, and it's it's sometimes very difficult, especially because they're isolated or they've lived with a loved one that they trust, and it's been it's a hard road to come forward, but it's just nice to know that um, there's people like us that are able to know that they shouldn't have be ashamed of what's going on in their life. Unfortunately, it can happen to anybody, including ourselves. So um, just know that we're here and our services are free, and we're, you're, all available for seniors, so thank you. Happy. So, um, Matt didn't ask how you can get a hold of the air agency on aging, yeah, so, right. um, <laughs> so I'm going to tell you. Um, our main number, we're in the uh, administration building in Doylestown, um, but we're out and about all over the county, but our main number is 267 
880-5700. And again, we have information out on the table so that if you need some, uh, our phone number, that's uh, available there for you. But we also have a 24-hour elder abuse hotline, and that number is 1-800-243-3767. So again, that information's out there, but I just wanna make sure you have that info. Thank you, Kathy. Mike? Thank you for having us, everybody. It was really good to be here. And like Matt said, you know somebody else will certainly come out and speak. Uh, you can call our office at any time. We, we have a lot of great information uh, about purchasing and consumer-related things. If you're going to buy a car, maybe, you can call our office. we got a brochure on buying cars in and outs in Pennsylvania. Uh, or if you're going to do any kind of purchase, call us. Uh, our mediators are trained listeners. They have good advice. So it's best to call. If you get a scam phone call and you want to report it or talk about it, you can call our office and we'll tell you where to report it, what we think about it. We'll share that information. No question too silly. Thank you very much. Maggie? Um, Kathy actually reminded me that I forgot to mention one service that Nova does provide. Um, we have so many that sometimes one one escapes. Um, but crime compensation is a program that is available for people who have been victims of financial scams. Um, it's run by the state. Um, the one caveat is you do have to be um, retired and receiving social security benefits. Um, however, you would be eligible to receive one month's worth of whatever your benefits are um, back in reimbursement. Um, often that amount does not typically cover the amount that people have lost in terms of scams because we see people who lose tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars even, and then they only are able to get back that one little bit from crime compensation, but you know every little bit helps when you've lost that amount of money. So I do want to throw that out there. Um, that is another service that NOVA can help people with. Um, but. Uh, so just to wrap up uh, about NOVA, uh, we are available, like I said, 24-7, um, 365 days a year. Um, and I agree with Julia, and I just want to echo what everybody else said, that you know, being victimized is nothing to be ashamed of. It's never your fault. I know you've probably heard that um, in other you know, uh, awareness campaigns, but it's not your fault. It never is. Um, and so don't be afraid to reach out for help because there are people um, like us up here who want to help and who will be more than happy to assist in whatever you need. So um, whether it's NOVA for criminal things or senior law for civil things or county agencies for anything in between, um, all of us up here want to help people out.